Greetings, pilot. This is Jiro Sugiyama, head of Paradiso Security. I apologize for coming over this emergency channel, but we are in need of assistance concerning the large ship in orbit, and we value discretion in this matter. If you are willing and able, please see me as soon as possible at the main security office in Paradiso. Over now. Staying safe out there. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sukiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Neither. We're our own private force. The Paradiso Group pays top dollar for top-notch security. And I dare say we're some of the best in the business. We have to be out here on the fringes of the settled systems. Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? You're right. We're not. Which means we're not bound by anyone's laws but our own. In other words, it's our system and our rules. Neither the UC nor the Free Star Collective will help you if you get into trouble here. I understand you're eager to get into it, but if you're unwilling to take this seriously, I can foresee problems in your future. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. And not quite. It took some time, but we received a transmission. It was all... Pardon the phrasing. It sounded almost alien, like nothing anyone's heard before. Clicks, distorted groans, buzzing, really disturbing sounds. Now, one of our engineers says it could just be some busted comm equipment or incompatible signals, but we're not sure. So far, no one's disembarked from the ship. No landing craft, nothing. We don't have the staff or ships to spare, otherwise we'd dock with it and attempt to board. 
It bears no discernible markings or allegiances to any manufacturers we're aware of. I'm hoping that doesn't mean we're dealing with some sort of new deep space threat. It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or what ever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him, and he'll have your pay. Good luck. We're human, from the planet Earth in the Sol system. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. You thought you were the only ones? I am afraid you have been unaware of a great many things. Perhaps we should greet our guests. 
Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. You've come aboard the Earth colony ship, Constant. Generations ago, we set forth from the planet Earth with the mission of colonizing a new habitable world in the spirit of our ancestors nearly a millennium ago. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200-year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Well, the short answer is, we didn't. It's a generation ship, which is to say that most of us lived long, happy lives on board and passed our mission down to our children. It was never intended that the original crew would make it to our destination. The goal was always the preservation of the human race, above all else. Though, it would seem that was perhaps a bit <laughs> presumptuous. We're not entirely sure. Our engineers believe it's possible that our technology just isn't compatible with theirs. All we hear when using them to communicate with anyone is a bunch of disturbing noise. It gave me the heebie-jeebies at first. We do. Well, sort of. We saw structures using our surveying equipment. We've also seen the various ships pass us by. Some even seemed to want to communicate, but couldn't. Of course, we had no idea that they were being piloted by other humans. Ah, your question confirms one of our recent theories. It would seem that some form of faster-than-light travel or space-bending technology was invented during our long journey. That would explain why we would find people this far out into space. I guess technology leapfrogged us at some point. Interesting. I can only imagine that our predecessors didn't believe the technology would ever work. And so they made the decision to leave when they did. Of course, we know that now. Human or not, we were still unable to communicate our intentions. As soon as we discovered them, we fully expected negotiations would be necessary. Now then, Please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. Thank you, Captain. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. For security purposes. I do not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth Colony Ship Constant. In the, the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rick Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios. Climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. So, he gathered the best and brightest he could find, built the constant, and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived, and died on this ship. Just it really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance.
I am both shocked and impressed that all of this is still functional. I have lived my entire life in the constant. I'm not sure how else to live. We didn't believe anyone would be out here, but I'm glad for it. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. Difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a bracken ridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? So they have a name, Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favors us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavor, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lacked the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. Yes, yes, of course but we need to start from a firm position and state our goal. If need be, we can compromise, work out a mutually beneficial deal or some such, but initially I'd like you to be firm with them and convince them to leave the planet to us. Let me know how they respond and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That will be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. It makes little sense to give up before you try. Thank you, and good luck. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work. 
we know what's out there. Things are going to Never seen a ship like this before. Well, then again, I haven't seen any ships before you arrived. These are exciting times, aren't they? Keeping a 200-year-old ship running is no easy task. I wonder what else is out there. I wonder what it's like out there beyond our little community. And to think, all this time, we thought we were alone. We've had to do our fair share of recycling on the continent. My mom and dad were scared when he came on board, but I don't know why. You seem okay. I bet you've been on lots of cool space adventures. Just like in the old movies. I heard you came from outside the ship. I bet it was pretty cold out there. Miss Yang said we are experiencing history right now, and that there will be books written about us. I'm gonna be in a book. I'm happy for the children, that they will know we are not alone out here. Captain Brackenridge says the future is bright. The Hello there. Given that I don't know you, you must be this visitor I've been hearing so much about. I'm Julia, the Constance chief historian. It's nice to meet you on this momentous occasion. If you ask around, people will either tell you my job is absolutely critical to the mission, or I just hang out, read, and watch movies. There's more to it than that. Officially, I'm assigned to the role of Chief Historian. Generations ago, it used to be Law Keeper of Humanity, but that seemed a bit too lofty. While I don't think my job is as important as Captain, Engineering Officer, or Cultivation Manager, it's still vital to our mission. Thanks for saying so. Goodbye. Huh. You're less weird than I thought you would be. Hey, hey, Miss Julia, can we watch that movie with all the superheroes in it again? Fancy gun around. You don't need to see what it can do. Any adventure you can fly away from.
Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? <laughs> what I could tell you would get me in a lot of trouble. Most of them are typical C-level execs. I doubt you even need to use your imagination for that. The ones that show up to work day to day, at least. I swear, I've never even met some of them, because they chill at their own private secluded beach homes all the time. Anyway, be smart around Oliver. He's got a way of getting what he wants without you realizing it. And that's all I'll say. Sure. Have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. Hope you're staying safe out there. I just feel that we should be focusing on the natural beauty of this planet, not our amenities. There are millions of planets out there. People can go to any one of them. The resort facilities are precisely what we bring to the table. Heck, <laughs> it's the only thing we've really got to offer. Ah. I don't want to risk us coming off as just another artificial, shady, trash filled dump like Neon. That's not who we are. We've got something special here. We should embrace that. The Lom's right. Thank you. I... We don't want to compete with Neon. Bayou's ruthless. He'll do anything he can to eliminate the competition. We don't need that kind of trouble. That being said, I think there's a middle ground. Maybe build up the beachfront in a boardwalk amusement park. I've had this idea to build artificial hot springs, that sort of thing. <sighs> Sounds good. I'll look into what that will cost us and we can circle back around to this. If you've heard about us elsewhere, chances are it's because of me. This is a boardroom, not a singles mixer or whatever you're looking for. Hey, I will... If it's not important, bring it up with Kiwi. We'll make some time for you, but keep it quick, yeah? Not quite. We just don't answer to the Free Star Collective or the United Colonies. Makes things easier. We don't pay any taxes. We don't need to follow their laws. All the benefits, none of the drawbacks. And no one minds, because half the politicians and other big shots love vacationing here. It works for everyone. We, the Paradiso Group, bought the rights to this planet years ago with the intent of turning it into the biggest and best resort in the universe. To that end, I'd say we've succeeded. As such, no other leisure enterprises may operate on the planet without renting land from us. But as you can see... None can afford such a deal. <laughs> no, of course not. There's several more. We're just the ones who show up day to day. The others spend their time lazing on the beach or gallivanting off-world. Doesn't bother me, though. Less cooks in the kitchen means I get to make all the big decisions around here. Seems to be working out for us just fine. I am. And you must be the... Diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> We 
we run a premier resort getaway here. We can't have our guests concocting stories about some bodgy old ship hanging around up there. As it is, we've had to reroute our luxury liners around the other side of the planet on entry so no one sees it. It's bad for business. We need to nip this in the bud and take care of it before the tourists catch on and cause a scene. You'd be surprised what people fall for. Locally sourced island fruit essences, for instance. It's just the same old fruits brought over from Earth ages ago, but we get nearly ten times a market for them. But you're right. No one's gonna buy aliens. Remind me to fire the marketing team. So, tell me, what's the actual deal with this massive eyesore of a ship? Besides scaring people away. I'd say you're full of it and might have been watching too many movies. Now, instead of wasting my time, want to tell me what it really is? Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not going to work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. We own this planet, they don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with, and how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. And that's within your right. But as the CEO of Paradiso Group, I'm the one who has to make and approve decisions around here, not you. So, as much as I appreciate your feedback, it's not in the best interest of the Paradiso Group to take it into account. I didn't say that specifically. This would be a mutual contract for room and board in exchange for services rendered. Of course, there's no telling how long this arrangement will last, given the substantial costs we'd need to take on in order to accommodate them here, including their continued room and board. But this may save the resort on operating costs in the long term, as we'd be able to let go of some of our current paid staff. <laughs> And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain.
They'd be hard-pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that charter is official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. I have no idea, because I'm not suggesting anything of the sort. But it's a wonder that old ship made it all the way here in such a relatively short time. Must have really been pushing themselves. An engineer friend of mine told me once that the reactors on those old ships have a tendency to self-destruct if they overload. Of course, their engineers must have taken great care not to push it too far. Someone would likely have to override the safety systems in the reactor computer. But who would do such a thing? I hope you are not asking what I think you are asking. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benno St. James over at Hope Tech? He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck! They deserve a renewed chance to decide their own fates. That is the right thing to do. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso Group, we appreciate your help. Just doing my part to make sure Paradiso remains a paradise. Is something amiss? Indeed I do. All yours.
have never liked Hope Tech ships. Though I suppose that is hardly the point of them. not used to people wanting to talk to me. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. Oh, you should have just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grab drive that looks like it could be compatible. With some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor, and it's yours? It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grab drives are. You know... Wait! We still have business? Sounds like me. Oh, Oliver sent the cut. So grab dry. Parts not cheap though. It's a pretty big ask. I can afford to take a loss on this. Hmm. That's something I hadn't considered. I could be famous, and with that comes more lucrative contracts. Tell you what. Sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. Done right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you.
other colonists knew how many times the constant almost came apart at the seams. Whew. But thankfully, I never let it. <laughs> I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Ah, I knew it. It's, it's incredible. I read about this technology in our archives from Earth, but it was only theoretical back then. Amazing! I'll have to learn more. Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Indeed, thank you for being so kind and indulging me. You must understand how thrilling this news is for someone like me. Someone who suspected this encounter was, in fact, possible. Ah, great question. I did not know for sure, but I can venture a guess. All of the reading I've done on the matter suggests that at the time, there was uncertainty that the technology would ever work, or if it did, that it would work at the scale we needed. So, I trust they made the decision to strike out when they did, fully believing it was the only way. Many years ago, when I was a junior engineer, the reactor's computer burned out. The computer that controls the reactor's various regulators. I'll spare you the details, but when that happens, the ship and everyone on it is in danger of turning into a mess of hot slag. I had to jury rig parts from old media devices to prevent a meltdown. And that's how I became the boss around here. Yes, so many. Does everyone have their own spaceships like you? Do people only live on naturally habitable planets, or did they learn to terraform? Are we in contact with alien species? I have so many more, but I don't want to take up all your time. Haha! <laughs> I knew it! Incredible! Amazing! Simply amazing! In our ancestors' time, only the very wealthy could afford to build ships. Even this ship was only possible by our families pulling together nearly all of their financial resources. Hmm. I'm not surprised. The amount of energy it would take to terraform an entire planet seems improbable. I can assume these types of colonies are strictly for mining and gathering rare resources since there are nearly limitless habitable planets to choose from out there. Hmm. Disappointing, but not unexpected. When you showed up, I tried to tell the others about the Fermi Paradox. I suggested that the most likely explanation for you was that humanity had developed faster, more advanced technology and had leapfrogged us. Seems I was right. Ah, thank you for taking the time to talk with me. I can have a bit of a big personality, I'm told. So let me know if I ever get on your nerves. What grab drive? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers built me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. All right, this will be fun, and hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great! 
There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it! Always appreciate a good engineer, whether they know it or not. Ah, uh, something wrong? There are three things we need to do. Reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. things we need to do. Reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Ah, uh, something wrong. There are three things we need to do. Reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly.
no matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. Now that you're here, I can finally give my crew a chance at a new life. Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. We don't yet know, but we did receive a star map from the Paradiso engineers. I suppose we'll just chart a course for other suitable habitable worlds until we find one that matches the quality of Paradiso. Uh, Puruma too, here. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck. But you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. We've got strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. Just because our equipment's old doesn't mean it won't work to take down troublemakers. Lucky we're under orders not to escort you right off this ship. Blowing off some steam. We were so close to finding our new 